Okay, I'm trying out a few political compass quizzes. This one is from the Pew Research Center. Uh, so let's see what they they have to ask and let's figure out what I believe and I'll try to explain my reasoning behind everything. Okay, if question one, if you had to choose, would you rather have a smaller government providing fewer services, a bigger government providing more services? Well, framed this way, in terms of strictly services, I do think that I want more tax dollars going towards paying for public goods like beaches and parks and education and infrastructure. So in this case, we're going to say yes. When you say you favor a bigger government providing more services, do you think it would be better to modestly expand on government current government services or greatly expand on current government services well okay moderately expand or greatly expand um, I suppose more sorry I don't know why this is kind of a weird question but we'll go forward which of the following statements come closest to your view? America's openness to people from all over the world is essential to who we are as a nation. If America is too open to people from all over the world, we risk losing our identity as a nation. Well, our identity as a nation is a white supremacist one, uh, which isn't even a value ju <laughs> judgment. I mean, sometimes these labels, you know, they, they have negative connotations attached to them, like racist or white supremacist, as they should. But they are a label. It means something. It's not just something you lobby at someone as an attack. So I do think America is or was founded as a fundament, uh, white supremacist nation. And I believe that the openness that we've had, the fact that it's this like new country that anyone can sort of come to and bring their culture to, I think that's what makes it a better country because it's more interesting. Diversity, diversity is always good in the biological word, world and in culture. Because nationalism or too much adherence to a certain identity uh, will often misguide you, I think. So it's a good thing. <clears throat> Question three. In general, would you say experts who study a subject for many years are usually better at making good policy decisions about the subject than other people, are worse, or neither better nor worse? <laughs> Generally, I would say experts are better at making policy decisions. I feel like this should have to go without saying, but it's like, if you're smarter about something, then you know more about it and the consequences and you've thought about it. Anyone can apply this logic to anything that they do. Experts are better than amateurs, <laughs> obviously. Question four, thinking about increased trade of goods and services between the U.S. and other nations in recent decades, would you say the U.S. has gained more than it has lost because increased trade has helped lower prices, increase competitiveness? of some US businesses. Lost more than a gain because increased trade has cost jobs in manufacturing other industries and lower wages for some US workers. Okay, this is finally like a good interesting question because there is a trade-off to globalization, which is that when you allow companies to ship work overseas to other countries to pay them at a lower rate, it definitely uplifts those communities that much we know for sure, but it, yes, leads to the Rust Belt or other aspects of American culture today where we don't have strong unions or people doing labor and so wages are depressed because of it. So has it ga have we gained more or lost more? I would say Increased trades of goods and services between the U.S. and other nations. I think trade is a good thing. I think nothing really bad can come 
of trade. Every civilization has benefited from trade to some extent. It's a big part of why the world is the way it is. It's because of trade more so than war or anything else. Culture. So I think overall it, the benefit to the world has been far better to have globalization and to have trade. Um, I don't think isolationist practices are that helpful. Maybe they kind of help you, you know, deal with things if you need to separate from like say the way Europe has had to sort of cut ties with Russia over oil but they're still kind of you know struggling because of that it's good to have things internally but I just don't know I think ultimately the world has to like work together for this all to work so there you go question five how much more, if anything, needs to be done to ensure equal white rights for all Americans, regardless of their racial or ethnic backgrounds? A lot, a little, nothing at all. Okay. Uh, probably, you know, I feel like as much as I've learned over the years, I still probably haven't learned enough. I think the toll that was taken because of, like, slavery and the genocide of indigenous peoples uh it has it has not been balanced and i don't know exactly what the correct way to do it is besides like giving people a bunch of money maybe from the government like the government itself has to pay the um reparations I think. I think that's the best way to do it. And so, I don't know. I think a lot probably still needs to be done still. Because it is an uphill battle. It is, it, things aren't fair yet. I think s some of the things that are talked about maybe are, you know, People often try to fixate on the worst outcomes of some of these things, uh, but I don't know. I think we still have a long way to go as a nation to rectify the wrongs that have been done to others as a result of white supremacy, which come closer to your view about what needs to be done. Okay. Uh, even if neither exists, most U.S. laws and major institutions need to be completely rebuilt because they are fundamentally biased against some racial and ethnic groups. Well, there's so many inequities that can be made by working within the current systems. Uh, I, this is too ambiguous of a question. I mean, for one, if we're, I'd probably say one thing that needs that can be completely rebuilt is that we have to uh, get rid of slavery <laughs> entirely in this country. Uh, which is what they, the 19th Amendment, which abolishes slavery except for prison. I, there probably is a lot that needs to be redone. Honestly, there's a lot that could be redone to the Constitution. It is by no means perfect. I am definitely for a complete rewrite. So let's just put it that way. It's like, yes, let's rewrite the Constitution and let's make sure that racial and ethnic uh, equity is included. Which of the following statements comes closest to your view? Business corporations make too much profit. Most corporations make a fair and reasonable amount of profit. Well, I think the important thing to always remember about this is that profit is everything that comes after what is required to maintain the business. It's like, by definition, it is the excess. It's what would, you know, you have what you're selling and your raw goods to make that thing. And that all has a cost and you factor in a price into that, that pays for that and pays for the employees and pays for the equipment that will keep the business running. All of that is accounted for. And then you have extra money so are co corporations making too much profit absolutely the <laughs> the wealth gap has never been more profound uh 
since the 1920s and we all um, we all know what happened no the of course they make too much profit and that money could be taxed and it could go back into the system because we the people help build these corporations question seven how much if at all would you bother would it bother you to regularly hear people speak a language other than english in public spaces in your community i really have no issue with this at all it's that's i feel like it's stupid that people are like oh english english it's like go to europe it's like <laughs> <laughs> You might hear more people speaking English. No, this is a stupid question. I feel like people can speak whatever language they want. I don't believe in this like country unity of culture. The only reason you need nationality is to encourage people to go fight for you in wars and kill other people. And we can debate whether or not we need to have a standing army. Uh, I don't know that much about you know maintaining geopolitical strength. But either way. A lot of these things function in order to convince people that they should die for their nation or die for a certain group of people. I mean, I feel like as long as you live in America and you follow the laws that we set in America, then it's all chill. Everyone gets to be involved. So no, the language thing is the least of our concern. Question eight, on a scale of zero to a hundred, where zero means you feel as cold and negative as possible and 100 feels a warm pause. How do you feel about, oh my God, okay. <laughs> okay, well we feel zero towards Republicans because um, I don't know if you align with Republicans nowadays, it's just like you either don't really know what's happening or you're one of these evil people exploiting people. The Republican party is built on con men all these people at the top they care nothing about any of us they just are looking to make more money they might try and hide it in culture and tradition and values there are those people that love their values but uh the republican party is a terrible party and it's uh, i'm going to be eating my words in a few weeks right i shouldn't release i should release this now and then delete it later when uh we fall to the Republican overlords in the next couple of years. I'm going to be eating my words. I should never have made this video. The Democrats, um, we're going to give them a solid 30, okay? Which isn't high, <laughs> but it isn't that low, all things considered. We are going to acknowledge the fact that the Democratic Party is currently enabling the genocide in Gaza. And, uh, but they are the party of certain ideals like the inflation reduction act that biden passed is so important to our nation we have to acknowledge that there are some people trying to hold all of this together and make it all work and make us all have the comfortable cozy lives that we have and for that we need to give someone credit someone needs to get credit for making this all happen at the same time this is a terrible party as well because they don't listen to anyone <laughs> it's under only under immense pressure that they do anything but at least under that pressure they do do things whereas republicans will never do anything for you question nine which of these statements best describes your opinion about the united states the u.s stands above all other countries in the world the u.s is one of the greatest countries in the world along with some others there are other countries that are better than the u.s this is um, kind of a loaded question too, talking about better or worse. Um, like everything has its advantages and disadvantages. I definitely don't think that, it, and also the way they phrase these is kind of weird. The US stands above all other countries in the world. I mean, in many regards, yes, absolutely. Um, like GDP or whatever, you know, that's obviously a big one. Um, or like, uh, probably certain you know liberties like we we do benefit from in the u.s like we can't totally disregard a lot of the advantages that we have in the u.s um 
So it is one of the greatest countries in the world, along with some others, but there are other countries that are better than the U.S. What would my example be? <laughs> I mean, I really like Portugal. I mean, in some ways it is better than the U.S. But it's hard to compare, again, it's hard to compare these things because it's such like different dynamics. Um, like I would say, like you could put the Euro I would put the European Union at this stage ahead of the U.S. And I would live there if I could. <laughs> Maybe I mean I don't I don't know if I know enough about the politics there. I mean the EU is very much dependent on the United States. I mean I don't know. There there's a lot to consider here. Ah. Uh, um, I'm going to say it is one of the greatest countries in the world because it is large and mighty and there are some things about living here that I do enjoy and I have to give credit where credit's due in terms of some of the things that the U.S. has accomplished even if some of those things are bad so yeah there are others though that are also good also great countries that I don't necessarily know about, but I know they're out there. I believe they're out there. I've been to some other countries and they've been fun, at least in the short term. I don't know what it's like to live there. So I don't really know, but this is how we're going to go forward. Question 10, how much of a problem any would you say each of the following are to in the country today? People being too easily offended by things others say people saying things that are very offensive to others interesting okay so people are too easily offended by things others say um it is a minor problem like it's not a major problem because people are right to be offended i feel like often the offense is over something that's actually fairly legitimate but there are exceptions. I feel like the exceptions you hear about online on Twitter and the majority of the things that people are offended about maybe are legit. I don't know though. I mean, this is the big culture war woke thing that they're really trying to get to. And I don't think it's a problem. There are a few annoying examples out there of people but it's a minor problem. And I would also put wokeness and the, the threat of wokeness is a minor issue. Even to maybe even saying not even a problem. Why is it a minor problem though? I do think people maybe are too like attack, like, you know, they're too ready, too reactive perhaps. Like it's too easy to kind of like lose your shit over something really small. Uh, online at least so we're going to call it a minor problem people are saying things that are very offensive to others I don't know how to stand on this I mean I don't think it's a major problem because I don't think the fact that it's offensive is the problem <laughs> this is like a big misunderstanding maybe too because it's like okay a sitting president of the United States saying you need is calling on people to hang a vice president. <laughs> like that's not offensive. That's just like an abuse. Like there has to be an understanding that words have power and depending on who is saying those words makes a huge difference. So it's not, people are saying things that are very offensive to others. I mean, some people are saying some mean things, but I don't know if that's ever not been true. I just, I don't know if it's about being offensive, but It's not, yeah, it's not about being offensive. I don't know if this is going to skew my results somehow, but I don't, I feel like the framing is wrong. And at least in the terms of, 
is saying something very offensive to other people a problem? No, because think about it this way. If you say something offensive, people are just going to, that's just your opinion. And someone's just going to react to that. However, they, like, <laughs> saying something offensive only just tells on yourself. It only just is like, this is who I am. And so you can say whatever you want. I'm just saying, don't be offended if people are offended by what you say and choose not to endorse you anymore. Say whatever you want. It's your tomb. Question 11. Which comes closer to your view of candidates for political office, even if neither is exactly right? I usually feel like there is at least one candidate who shares most of my views. None of the candidates represent my views very well. Um, this is complicated. I feel like often on paper, or at least like in the way Democrats frame their positions, they usually have like good positions. Like I'm pro climate, I'm pro uh, women's rights, I'm pro LGBT, you know, all these things that were like, yeah, those are all good things. But then when it comes to them actually being in office, they just don't do anything that matters. So. I can't say that none of the candidates represent my views well. Maybe that's true. When it comes to the view, but like, uh, shares most of my views. I don't know. I do end. Up, I feel like I always end up finding the progressive candidate when I vote. They never win, but I always at least find one. So we're gonna say one. Maybe I don't know. 12. In general, how much do white people benefit from advantages in society that black people do not have? I would say a great deal, a fair amount, not too much, not at all. Um, I, again, I want my intuition is a fair amount, but based on what I have learned and know, I'm going to actually say it's a great deal because I think I'm probably very negligent being white of things that black people experience. So, you know, and you can call me some, you know, woke cuck or whatever, but I feel like if any of you who might say that would engage with any amount of American history in an honest way, you cannot tell me that white people do not benefit more from our current society than black people do. And historically, certainly not so either. So let's just uh, let's just keep moving. Question 13. Do you think greater social acceptance of people who are transgender, people who identify as a gender that is different from the sex they were assigned at birth, is good for society? Some are good, neither. Okay. I think it's very good for society. Because I intuitively feel that gender is not a fixed thing. There's nothing about the way that I think that I say this is... I don't think masculine and feminine are like these two energies that exist. People like to think that there's somehow like inherent qualities and that is just so not the case for anything let alone ge gender. So if you feel a certain way, if your gender identity aligns with certain you know pockets that are more female or more male you know i'm very much like on the fluid gender spectrum at least in terms of that's how i think gender is and some people are really hard lined certain ways and you can be that way but i think allowing transgender people to exist is good for society because then everyone gets to realize it's like oh actually you can live any way you want and it doesn't have to align with the certain gender. And in fact, oftentimes it's quite silly to be so heteronormative uh, and gender normative. So it's very good. Question 14. Overall, would you say people who are convicted of crimes in this country serve too much prison t time in prison, too little, and just the right amount of time? I would generally say across the board people spend too much time in prison. I don't think it may be like a soft solution. Maybe soft isn't the word. It's a hard solution. The idea that you just lock up the people that you don't want in society. 
but I think it falls short of the goal of society and how we should think about people. I don't think anyone is beyond rehabilitation. Maybe in some extreme cases, but I just don't think that treating people as subhuman is the answer. So generally, I think too much time in prison, maybe there is a case to be made for some amount of prison or at least some amount of like timeout space or <laughs> someone who does a bad thing, you know, has to find a way to atone. Like murder is obviously a pretty extreme example that needs to be like dealt with in a certain way. I don't know exactly, but I would say generally, I mean, there's so many crimes out there that people are spending way too long in prison over and it's ruining their lives and making them not useful for society. Once you spend time in prison and you get out, you have so much more of a difficult time uh, getting back into society. And what other choice do you maybe have than to just go back to a life of crime? So we need to find another alternative. Question 15. Which of the following statements comes closest to your view? Religion should be kept separate from government. Government should support religion. Uh, religion is nonsense or it's like it's it's just culture it's just a certain type of culture and a set of beliefs that have nothing to do with anything related to how we should run society i mean maybe you know the bible was like the law of the land for how you should run a society six thousand years ago or four thousand years ago like we're, this is what we're going to do but modern solutions or modern problems need modern solutions religion doesn't effectively deal with all the different scenarios that we need to cover religion should very much be kept separate from the government i live in rhode island i am a inheritor of roger williams dream you know it's for your own good it's the first amendment right <laughs> in the future do you think u.s policies should try to keep it so america is the only military superpower it would be acceptable if another country became a military super as powerful as the u.s Okay, this is a good question, because now we're finally getting down to the reality of everything. As much as we love to imagine like how our own society should be, we have to put ourselves in relation with the rest of the world and have to accept that maybe other people in the rest of the world don't exactly want us to exist, or maybe don't really like us, and they might have good reasons for that, or they might have bad reasons for that. And then you have to say, well, is the U.S. ultimately something that is good or some is it something that's inherently bad is there any gray area there there's a benefit to being the one military superpower which is that we sort of end war to some extent uh does there need to be balance i don't know i mean we should u.s policies should try to keep us as interesting so it's like, should we step off our defense budget so that others might catch up? And that's an interesting question. This is, this I think is the most interesting question of all. Because I think that even if you have a very left-leaning opinion about how your country should be run, you ultimately have to grapple with like China or Russia or something like that as an alternative society to the one that we have. Would you rather live a more Chinese or Russian society, or would you rather live a more Western way? Um, <laughs> Controvert. Okay, so I'm gonna take a stand here. Oh, it's to click this is to say that defense budget go boom, and this is to say defense budget. Let's like chill off a bit. It'd be like, stop sending money to Israel. Stop sending money to Ukraine. <laughs> like, ease off the gas. And you know what? I feel like for the good of all the people out there, like, the war machine... It, this is another thing I believe, which it maybe goes in contrary step to what I was just saying. But we're led to believe that U.S. foreign policy is keeping us safe but it may very well be the case that our foreign policy is actually harming our country and making it worse 
Because you think about the things we do in the Middle East in pursuit of oil and control and who does that benefit? Who is that actually benefiting? Is it benefiting me? You know what? Maybe it is time for another country to become a superpower. But then, you know, again, do I want to give up certain liberties that I have? Will Would I have to? That's the question. That's the question I want for you at the end of all this. But for now, we're going to be submissive. We're going to say U.S. roll off, ease off the gas. You don't have to be so evil all the time. We can be a chill nation from here on out and introduce chill policies. And we'll just see what happens. If we die, at least we died chill. Oh, really? I'm progressive left. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Hmm. Well, I guess that's reassuring, right? That, uh, you know, no one wants to be conservative because that's really boring. Conservative folks online are super boring. Outdated. Outdated BS. Yeah, this didn't really teach me much, but... Uh, Yeah, I guess distinguish concern about racial justice, climate, like we didn't even cover that much in this video. I mean, it has been 30 minutes, but we could have gotten a lot deeper, a lot more issues. And I certainly would like to talk about more of these things. But for now, let's just acknowledge that we are progressive left as according to the PewResearch.org website. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you won't attack me. <laughs>